Hey guys, how's it going? This is Watch from the MW Technology Channel on YouTube. And in this video, we're doing a comparison between the Nvidia Shield and the PlayStation Vita. Now, before we begin the direct comparison, I just want to let everyone know that these two devices are quite different, even though they're both portable gaming devices. The first of all, the PlayStation Vita came out a couple of years ago. So in terms of hardware and the overall software and everything about it, it's a little bit dated compared to the brand new 2013 Nvidia Shield. And again, there are different platforms and they are designed completely differently. So I just want to get that out of the way so you know straight off the bat that it's not really an apples to apple comparison, but it'll give you a good idea in terms of how they compare against each other. So without any further ado, let's get right into the comparison. Now the first thing that we're going to take a look at is the overall physical design and specifications of both these two devices. Now straight off the bat you can see that the Nvidia Shield and the PS Vita are completely different in terms of design. They come from different philosophies and the shape of the devices are completely distinct from each other as well. Now if we compare the dimensions of these two devices you'll see that the PS Vita measures about 83.5 millimeters in height and about 182 millimeters in its length. Now the Nvidia Shield is not as long as the PS Vita measuring about 158 millimeters but it is substantially taller measuring about 135 millimeters. Additionally, you also notice that there's a huge difference between the overall thickness of these two devices. The PS Vita is quite thin, measuring about 18.6 millimeters, and the Nvidia Shield just towers over it, measuring about 57 millimeters. Now, in terms of weight, the PS Vita measures a very light 260 grams versus the monstrous weight of 579 grams on the Nvidia Shield. Now, if we talk about the design specifically, the Nvidia Shield is really based upon a classical full-size console controller. And in effect, what they're doing is pretty much trying to emulate a full-size console controller experience, whether it be an Xbox 360, which it has a lot of physical similarities with, not only in terms of how it feels within your hand, but also the responsiveness of the buttons and triggers also match the Xbox experience quite well. Now, now on top of this console-like controller, NVIDIA has incorporated a clamshell style design for a high resolution flip out touchscreen. So that not only means that the touchscreen would be protected when not in use, but the shield will also be just a tiny bit more portable. Now that being said, it's nowhere near as portable as most of the established gaming platforms out there such as the PlayStation Vita and the Nintendo DS. Now specifically when you take a look at the PlayStation portable devices that Sony has released for almost more than a decade, you see that there's an evolutionary step of where the Vita comes from. In my opinion though, I do have to say that the PS Vita alongside every other PSP device that Sony has come out with has not really come up with a great comfortable ergonomic design that you can play serious and casual games on. For me personally, I find the whole setup to be a little uncomfortable and cramped. And even though the Vita has all the conventional controls you would expect to find on a fully fledged console, it never seems to be the absolute best choice for a mobile gaming platform. Now I've personally owned a lot of the different PSP devices that Sony has come out with over the years and never had a real serious problem with the control interface, but it's not until you actually get to try out the Nvidia Shields controller, which again, as we pointed out, is much more in the lines of a fully fledged gaming controller. So therefore automatically the Nvidia Shield feels a lot more comfortable and you could probably game on it for several hours and never really have the sense that you're playing on a cramped mobile device that was retrofitted for these mobile type of games. It feels like a fully fledged console that really gives you the opportunity to really play any game in any kind of fashion. Now let's go ahead and talk about the screens that come in both these two devices. They're both 5 inch screens, but there is a big difference in terms of resolution. The Vita has a screen resolution of 960 by 544, which is certainly lower than the 1280 by 720 screen that's on the Nvidia Shield. Now obviously with that, the Nvidia Shield has higher pixel density, so images, text, and video do look sharper and clearer compared to the PSP Vita. Now in reality, both screens 
screens look really good. The PlayStation actually has a OLED display, so the colors and the black levels are really exceptional. The colors and black levels are also good on the Nvidia Shield as well, so they're really quite comparable in most regards, even though the Nvidia Shield has the slight advantage of having the higher resolution. Now, in terms of what comes inside these two devices, the PS Vita comes with a ARM Cortex-A9 quad-core processor with 512 megabytes of RAM. And uh, this is a little bit inferior to the NVIDIA Tegra 4 quad-core that's in the NVIDIA Shield. But in addition to the faster processor, the NVIDIA Shield also has four times the amount of RAM, having two gigs of RAM. Now, as we mentioned before, these hardware specifications are really governed by the time that these devices come out and and you would obviously expect to see the superior hardware on the newest product. However, it's important to realize that when you're dealing with any kind of gaming console, that hardware is only one part of the coin. The other side is dealing with the software and the gaming development of how certain games take advantage of the hardware that's inside the console. Now, if anybody has ever tried out the PS Vita, they know that the gaming quality is quite exceptional. It's almost close to what the PS3 can offer in a scaled down sense. And obviously the Nvidia Shield has the superior hardware, but right now, the biggest issue with the NVIDIA Shield and really most portable gaming devices that are trying to compete against PlayStation and Nintendo, they're going to have to take on the biggest challenge of all, and that's getting developers to make content for their hardware. Now, currently, the PS Vita has a huge lead over the NVIDIA Shield in terms of content and games that are available for you to purchase and play right off the bat. And Sony has really done a good job in terms of getting developers to create PS Vita-specific games and also do a good job in porting their mainstream titles on the PlayStation 3. In addition to all the mobile-specific games that you can play, the Vita has a feature called Crossplay, which allows you to connect to your PS3 and play most of your PS3 titles. Now when we take a look at the gaming content for the Nvidia Shield, you'll certainly find no shortage in terms of gaming content, mainly because it uses the Android Play Store to download its games. Now pretty much all those Android games are optimized for touchscreen interfaces only, and even though the Nvidia Shield has a fully fledged touchscreen on it, you can play all those games. But to utilize the Nvidia Shield's controller, you have to go to the Shield Store and select from a very limited selection of games optimal for the Nvidia Shield. That being said, however, the Nvidia Shield has a really amazing feature that might intrigue some of you PC gamers out there. You can essentially stream your PC games to the Nvidia Shield. Now, there are some serious hardware components that you need to have in order to fulfill this PC streaming capability. Some of these requirements include that you need to have a GTX 650 graphics card or higher. You also need to have a pretty fast computer in general, in addition to having a $200 AC router. Now, with all these requirements, it does restrict the amount of people that can even do this PC streaming ability, but if you do meet all those requirements, the experience is quite exceptional, and it essentially gives the Nvidia Shield the same amount of horsepower that's in your custom-built gaming PC. Now, in terms of some of the advantages the Vita has over the Shield, actually include a rear and front-facing camera, which uh, some games are using for augmented reality and some applications are also using. And funny enough, even though the Shield runs a full Android operating system, it has no cameras. Additionally, the PS Vita has a rear touch interface, allowing it to do some interesting things with uh, certain gameplay controls and mechanics. And of course, the Shield has no additional touch interface besides the main capacitive touchscreen. When we start taking a look at the connectivity of both these two devices, the Nvidia Shield has a more modern Wi-Fi system. It has AC capabilities as well as dual band. But what the Shield has in Wi-Fi, it lacks in 3G network. The Vita has a capability to connect to a 3G network based on your carrier, and you can potentially play online games and download content, be on the web, anywhere you go. 
In terms of physical connectivity and ports, the PS Vita, such as in most Sony's fashion, is completely proprietary. The Vita itself does not come with any built-in memory, so you need a proprietary Vita memory card to basically download any games or content. And since you can buy physical copies of PS Vita games, it has a special slot that you can insert physical memory cards that contain PSP Vita games. Now the Nvidia Shield is just packed with a whole bunch of different ports that you can connect many universal standards of connections. For example, it has a standard micro SD card slot so you can expand the included built-in memory to even 128 gigs. It has a standard micro USB port for charging and transferring data, as well as a mini HDMI connection to output the signal to a larger display. Now when we talk about sound on both these two devices, there is a huge difference. The Nvidia Shield is substantially better, both in terms of bass response and overall clarity of the sound. It has three speakers and it delivers a really amazing mobile sound experience that frankly the PS Vita could never really match even though it has two dual stereo speakers. Lastly, we're going to talk about battery life. Now, physically speaking, the Nvidia Shield has the more powerful components inside, so it requires a little bit of a larger battery, and it has a battery about 3,400 milliamp hours. That'll get you about five to six hours of gaming, no problem. And again, it depends on what you're doing. You can probably get a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on what you're doing on that device. The PS Vita has a smaller capacity battery because it requires less power. It has a 2,200 110 milliamp hour battery and it'll get you about two to five hours of gameplay. But on that guys that's really it. If you have any specific questions about anything I talked about in this video make sure to leave it on a comment down below and make sure to let us know in terms of what you like, what you prefer better. Do you have a PS Vita already? Are you thinking about perhaps getting a Nvidia Shield because of its, some of its advantages or do you think the Nvidia Shield is probably going to not take off because it doesn't have the gaming content right now and Android is, is not really designed to have physical controls for most of its games. So please let me know, share your thoughts and opinions. I would love to hear them. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Uh, please give us a thumbs up for this video. It helps us a lot. Favorite as well if you could. That'd be awesome. And we'll see you later. Take care. One meter distance away from the controller and it captures all 10 fingers and you're moving one meter distance away from the controller and it captures all 10 fingers and you're moving